In this video I'm going to take a look at what is meant by an imaginary number when we're dealing with complex numbers. In the last video we looked at this computer program and we saw that we imported the math module and on this line I let x be assigned minus 1 and here on this line you can see I'm taking the square root of x which is indeed taking the square root of minus 1 and when the program runs we got this error and the error I'm showing in a bigger font here and you can see it says math domain error. Now that's because when this function attempted to find the square root of minus 1 it came back with an error saying I do not know how to do this and what this is relating to is the fact that the square root function returns a float and a float is a representation of a real number in mathematics. Now there is no real number that is the square root of minus 1. It doesn't exist anywhere along the real number line. In other words, the square root of minus 1 does not exist in the real number set. Now if you're unsure about what is meant by what I've just described there, you may better reflect back on the previous couple of videos in this playlist on complex numbers. In the previous video we looked at this x squared equals minus 1 and we went on to ask how do we find x and we showed that we could take the square root of both sides and we would end up with this and that would be equal to a number that I was unable to find. I can find a real number such that when that real number is multiplied by a copy of itself that will give me minus 1. Consequently, we can say that there is not a real number solution. Now, I have illustrated the problem of not being able to find a real number to satisfy the equation by this here, the question mark. And you can see that I am really saying, well, I don't know. And we looked at using the math module with Python and it couldn't find it either. But what mathematicians will do in circumstances like this, they will invent a symbol for this and the symbol they use is i and you can see that appearing here. x is equal to i where i is an imaginary number and i represents the square root of minus 1. So in mathematics, every time you see the square root of minus 1, you could, if you so wished, replace it with the symbol i. In mathematics textbooks and on the web, you will often see the symbol i represented, as you can see here. i equals the square root of minus 1. Now, I don't want to be too pedantic here, but I'm going to be briefly. We're not really saying i is equal to the square root of minus 1. Use this as a memory aid. i is the symbol that represents the square root of minus 1. It is just handy when you're doing some calculations to think of i in the way in which it's shown here. i is equal to the square root of minus 1. But in fact, whenever you see i, it's replacing the square root of of minus 1. So i is regarded as an imaginary number and if you remember a complex number has a real and an imaginary part and the imaginary part will always be represented by a number and i right next to each other. But of course in engineering mathematics i is often used for things like the flow of current through an electric circuit and in computer programming you'll often see for i in the range and then there will be a specification of the range to define some kind of loop. So python doesn't use i to represent the square root of minus one it uses j. So you will often see this wrote down j is equal to the square root of minus 1. But j is the symbol that represents the square root of minus 1 and also uppercase j. So you can use lowercase j or uppercase j to represent the imaginary part of a complex number. Now I will be using lowercase j throughout this playlist on complex number. I don't use the uppercase j. But to be sure we understand, these two are effectively the same thing. It's just that mathematicians would use i, and in Python we use j to represent the imaginary number part of a complex number. Bearing in mind that j is the symbol that represents the square root of minus 1. 
Now the key points I would like you to take away from this video are as follows. Think of i as an imaginary number whose value is the square root of minus 1. And remember that mathematicians use i for the imaginary number. Think of j as an imaginary number whose value is the square root of minus 1. And of course j is used in Python to represent an imaginary number. I also reminded you of the following point. Importing the math module does not allow the square root to find the square root of minus 1. In other words, the square root function expects to be returning values that are floats. In other words, real numbers. And we've already looked at the fact that the square root of minus 1 is not a real number. We went on to show that attempting to take the square root of minus 1 when we're using the math module gives you a value error which says math domain error. Meaning, look, I haven't got a value that's the square root of minus 1. So it is saying can't do it. But of course, this is not to say that we cannot deal with the square root of minus 1 as I've outlined in a previous video and that we're going to look at in the videos coming up. Let's now consider the key points from the perspective of the Python programming language. In Python, we can think of j as an imaginary number whose value is the square root of minus 1. But it's better to regard j as the symbol that represents the square root of minus 1. More accurately, j is a symbol that represents a solution to the equation x squared equals minus 1. And of course, if I take the square root of both sides of this, we can find that we have x equals the square root of minus 1. So this is another way of saying what's the square root of minus 1 when you think through what we're implying here. Now the final point about Python that I want you to bear in mind is this. We will see when 1j is assigned to a variable, it will result in an instance, in other words an object, of the complex class. 1j is an imaginary number which is part of a complex number. And if you were to say something like y equals 1j, then y will be the name bound to an instance of the complex class that has the value of j, the value of 1j. So we can see that the 1j is a number in the same way as 2.5 or 1 is a number. It's just a 1 when it's an integer is an instance of the integer class. 2.5 that would be an instance of the float class and when you see 1j it is an instance of the complex class because an integer class, a float class and a complex class produce instances where those instances will be objects that are representing numbers because 1j is most definitely a number. It just happens to be a number that's not on the real number line. Check out the supporting website for these videos in addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?